Hello everyone, it's Mark. For this week's Sanderson Collector video, we are going to be going over the anatomy of a book and talking about each of the pieces of a book and what they are properly called. So I'm going to assume that you know like the very basics, like, you know, spine, cover, and I'm going to get into some more of the details. And the first thing I do want to jump into is on a hardcover, you have this thing called the dust jacket. That is the place where the art is printed that goes on top of the rest of the book. And this is usually done on very nice glossy paper. When the paper has that reflection on it, that is called glossy. When it does not, that is called matte, M-A-T-T-E. -T -E. And so either one can be used for dust jackets on a book. On a dust jacket, you'll have the cover art. If the art is a single piece, like on these books, that is called wraparound art, where a single piece goes front, spine, and back. And on some books where it is not, and they either do not use art on the spine and back, or they reuse some of the art, that is just like a front cover and then spine art and then the back of the book. I don't think there's a special term for this. Additionally, with dust jackets, you usually have these two little pieces right here that are part of the dust jacket that go over the book and help hold the dust jacket on. These are called the cover flaps, and they are usually where you will find on a hardcover like the author's bio and the cover copy for the book, which is the little spiel that tries to sell the book, although that can also be on the back cover and for paperbacks and so on, it is often on the back cover. Now this one, as you may have noticed, has some absolutely gorgeous art inside of it. This is not the norm. The only Sanderson books that have this so far are the Alcatraz reissues and Oathbringer, although I am very hopeful that they will continue it with Rhythm of War. Most dust jackets, as you can see on the Mistborn dust jacket here, are simply white paper on the inside because the publisher rarely expects people to take the dust jacket off and look at the inside. There's one more detail to look at on the outside of the dust jackets, and that is whether or not they are embossed, and that means whether or not essentially the paper has ridges and bumps where the letters are. You can see that here on Oathbringer that the letters are slightly raised and not totally flat, and that is embossed. And you can also see that on the inside, you can see Brandon's name poking through there because that part of the paper has been essentially punched with a machine so that the letters are raised and you can feel it with your fingers. That is called embossing on the cover of a book. This cover from the Mistborn 7th printing is not embossed. It is totally flat. There is no punching through at all, and so that is a non-embossed cover. Commonly, covers are used with protectors, which I actually need to put on a lot more of my books. That is one of the things I have been kind of negligent about in my collecting, but you can get these really nice covers, such as this one on Mistborn. This is actually a matte cover. The reflections you see here are from the dust jacket protector, which is this piece of plastic that wraps around the dust jacket and protects it from getting damaged on the inside or outside while it is sitting on the book to keep your book in the most pristine condition. So now we've been over dust jackets. Lots of books do not have dust jackets. Sometimes you'll even buy a book that was supposed to have a dust jacket and it does not have that dust jacket anymore. Now here in the United States, you expect dust jackets just to be on the hardcovers, paperbacks, and whatnot. Do not have that at all. All the books I have shown so far have been hardcovers where the boards on the end of the book are solid and do not bend. Here is a paperback of Elantris in Chinese. And on this one, not only do we have this little sail thing at the bottom that some foreign books have, but this is a paperback, you can see the pages bend, but there's a flap right here, and if I open it up, there's actually a basically dust jacket on the front of this book that goes around the paperback binding of the book, which has its own printing of the title on the front of the book. And that is occasionally something you will find on foreign editions. The Japanese editions have this, the Chinese editions, and 
There might be a few others that I am forgetting at the moment. Now that we have discussed dust jackets, we get into the rest of the book, and everything I've shown so far is a hardcover. And on the hardcovers, the cover is called The Boards. So here we have a copy of Mistborn where I took the dust jacket off. This is the front board of the book, and this is the back board of the book. You can see they're actually secured to the spine with paper right here. And there are three separate boards that go around the book on each side. And these boards, usually you can see the cloth wrapping over the board just goes into about here on the inside. And then there's paper covering over on the inside of the board. This paper, which is usually the first page or so of the book, here it's these pages, is called the end paper. It's usually made of thicker material than the rest of the paper, and it is mainly there to secure the rest of the book to the boards and keep it from falling apart. Now, some boards are ornamented. Here is Oathbringer. On the spine, it has, as you would expect, the title and so on. On the front, we have the Bondsmith glyph very subtly impressed into the cover, which I think is absolutely an amazingly beautiful detail, and I love it when they do this on books. Not all books have the budget to do this. Some books come without a dust jacket, and the cover art is printed directly onto the cover. These are called case-wrapped books. The U.S. Library and Turtleback paperbacks, the U.K. small edition hardcovers, and various other foreign editions like the French White Sand and Russian Way of Kings and various others that I'm obviously forgetting at the moment all have these case-wrapped covers where the cover is printed directly onto the boards. Inside it looks just like normal. The paper wraps around just to a little bit of the inside of the board, and then the end page covers the rest of the board on the inside. Now some books have that, but with a different feel. These are the 10th anniversary Mistborns from the UK and they have a more cloth feel to the binding, although the cover art is still directly printed on there, and it is very nice and shiny and reflective. Then you have, for example, the leather bound, or various leather substitute books, and again, the cover is printed directly onto the leather, and then inside you can see the leather goes to a little bit past where the end pages is, are, and then the end pages hold that into the book. You can see it well on this one that the binding, which is the bit in the back of the book that holds all the pages in, is basically just secured at the ends of the book by those end papers, and all of the pages in the book, the text and everything else, are attached to the binding right here, and the binding is not directly attached to the spine. One more element that the leather-bound books have that regular hardcovers do not are the little bumps on the spine. These are called hubs. In olden days, they were where the thread that the binder used to sew the book pages in wrapped around, and they were made to look nice and ornamental. These days, they are purely ornamental. The thread does not wrap around, and it is not that large, but it's still a really cool artifact, and I really think it's cool that they included that on the Dragonsteel Leatherbound editions. Those are the only ones I have seen that have the hubs on the spine. Here is a paperback copy of The Final Empire in Dutch, just to show you that some paperbacks also have a cover flap without having a separate dust jacket. Here the paperback has this cover flap without a separate dust jacket and board, like the Elantris in Chinese that I just showed you. So. This is another thing you can see on the paperbacks, and I think it's really cool. One thing to note about the end pages is that they're almost always blank white paper just used to secure the books in, like this. However, for the Stormlight books, Brandon has taken advantage of this space. And for those end pages, the first pages of the book, we have this gorgeous art printed in, and then this is the first non-end page page of the book. And that is basically everything on the outside of the book. I'm going to talk a little bit about the various pages in the book and what they're called. So we have essentially the page that has the title of the book, and then usually we'll have like 
a list of the books that Brendan has written. Sometimes there's material up front that says, here's some reviews of the book, and here's why you should buy it, and so on, advertising like that. Then we get into the page that has all of the fancy fonts and titles and everything, and the one that has the title and Brandon's name on it is called the title page. This is the page where Brandon almost always signs the book. In the case of Elantris, sometimes he signs it on another page because that title page is so dark his pen won't show up, but this is where it is almost always signed, and always on the back of that we have the copyright page, which has all of the copyright information for the book. It tells you where the art came from and who made it. It tells you what printing the book is. It tells you the ISBN and Library of Congress data and who owns the copyrights and so on. And so that is really one of the most important things for collectors and what we always look at and analyze to make sure the book is first printing, first state, and so on. After that, you usually get into the text. There's dedications and acknowledgments. And then here is the actual text of the book, starting with the table of contents and going through all of the rest of the book. In the back, sometimes you will have a couple of pages, like in Brandon's YA books, the acknowledgments will be in the back. But the rest of the book is usually just the text of the book. The important pages to know in the front are the title page and the copyright page. Some countries have copyright information in the front and back of the books. Usually I find this happens with countries that go from left to right on their pages instead of right to left as we do here in the States. So here is the first part of Mistborn in Japanese, and you can see there's a little bit of copyright info, the title of the book, and so on at the front, and one copyright page here that says this is Mistborn, the Final Empire, blah blah blah, and then you get through the book, and at the back there's more information about the publisher and so on, so essentially a second copyright page. I have never seen this in a US copy, like I said it's only in the foreign copies, and usually in the ones that are printed from left to right, a couple more things to cover here. On the Elantris hardcover, we can see the binding really well in that it is separate from the spine and attached just to the end pages here and here. All the pages are glued or sewn to the binding. On paperbacks, the pages are glued directly to the spine. As you can see here, there is no separate binding layer, and so that means usually we do not need end pages for paperbacks. Some paperbacks, like this one for Oathbringer, do not have the end pages right at the end, but they did print them in because they are such an important and gorgeous part of the book. Usually you will not see end papers like that in a paperback because they're not necessary to hold the book together. Here is the mass market paperback of Oathbringer, and it does not have any of that stuff. It just opens up with praise for the book, so that part is in essence, missing from this edition. Quick note, if you do want that art and you have an edition like the paperback that does not have it, you can go to Brandon's website and he has some awesome art galleries that show off all of the books that he has written. I highly recommend checking those out. So yeah, that is my lecture on the anatomy of a book. If there's something you think I have missed or something I mislabeled or whatever, Please let me know and I will try to correct it as soon as possible. I really hope this helps and was informative to some of y'all, and I will see y'all next week, and until then, happy collecting!